Okay, this video is called the isms, and it goes right in line with our industrial revolution unit that we are on because a lot of these things rise up out of these more modernized or industrialized countries. So let's start with capitalism. Adam Smith is the father of capitalism. He kind of uh, coined the term. Uh, capitalism is the idea where individuals own the businesses and the resources, and then people invest their money into those businesses hoping to make a profit. Capitalists believe that the government doesn't do a good job of using economic resources, resources, resources as efficiently as private businesses. So therefore, the free market should decide the winners or losers, meaning that if you're good at making money, you should be allowed to make money. If you don't make enough money, then you should be poor. That's the free market kind of deciding that. That's a very boiled down approach, all right? So for example, some of us own businesses, right? So those are the winners, right? And in order for the rest of us to be winners, we sell our ability to work. So we can work in those businesses in hopes to make money and be a winner as a part of that free market as well. Kind of capitalism is based on three things. I've boiled it down to three things, meaning a lot of people work for money. So a wage, we work for a profit, we work to make money. Private ownership of production, resource, et cetera. So people, <coughs> individuals own the entire business. And you pay for what you get, meaning production in exchange for profit. So if I buy the price for three cartons of milk, then I get three cartons of milk. So that exchange, you pay for what you get. Then we have this guy named Karl Marx who sees capitalism rising up through these industrialized countries, and he says, hold up. All of history has been a history of social classes and the struggle between the poor and the rich, the haves or the haves not, or in this case, the CEO or the owners of the businesses versus the workers. He writes a book called the Communist Manifesto, where he encourages workers to unite and rise up and revolt against the business owners. Then, when the workers are in control, they would create a system called socialism, which is our second ism. And that is where the government would distribute the resources that everybody makes among equally to the people. Right? Socialists believe that economic inequalities, or people are not treated the same or have the same things, is bad for society, and the government should be responsible for making it equal. So the government owns the means of production, but some socialists would say that the government should be providing free health care, right? Or at least some sort of subsidized health care, education, different things like that, in order to level the playing field and keep things equal for people. So this idea is work for your own good and the good of everyone else. So you're kind of working for yourself and for the benefit of those around you. Extra bonus points if you can comment on my video and tell me who in our current political climate is accused of being a socialist more often than not. All right, communism is kind of this extreme form of socialism, right? It's kind of a, a way of life, a government, um, an economic system. It's a little bit of everything. It's kind of hard to summarize. Um, in fact, they're also very confused, socialism and communism. So Marx believed that once socialism was in place for everybody, the workers' revolution after the workers' revolution, then communism could exist. So this was uh, this is the ideal society by Marx. So after we set up a system of socialism, then this idea of communism could take root, and the government or the people controls all aspects of life, owns all of the property and production in the effect to keep it equal. So communism is kind of this next level of living where people operate outside of government really because they're just providing for one another. Um, in order to benefit society equally. So let's move away from the idea of economic um, isms and move to just these two isms, one we've talked about and one that may be new to you. So nationalism, because you start to have countries competing for resources, you get a feeling of community among people based on common descent, language, religion, country borders, and you get this idea of nationalism, which is devotion to one's country. Um, so like Britain doesn't really necessarily want to trade everybody because they're trying to get ahead and stay more modernized than other people. So you start to create these rivalries, these competitions among countries, especially the European countries. And this rivalry competition leads to conflict, which we'll talk about more in our next unit. So that's nationalism, this devotion to one's country. It's great, but it's also poisonous if it goes too far, right? Imperialism, we've talked about this a bunch, is a way of governing um, where large countries who have a lot of power assert their authority over their borders, just like Great Britain does to the United States, just like Spain did to many of the people in South America, just like um, France does, just like everybody that we've studied in the Exploration and Colonization Unit, 
That is the idea of imperialism. Africa suffers a great deal under European imperialism. So the reason this is important is because modern industrialized countries like Great Britain, the one we studied for the Industrial Revolution, is competing against other modernized countries, maybe like Spain or Germany or France, for control of less industrialized countries, um, maybe some countries in Africa, some countries in South America and Asia, because the resources in these countries were very cheap. They hadn't industrialized yet. They hadn't realized the benefit of coal and iron and water and electricity. And this is known as the age of imperialism, which is the last ism that we will study for this unit.